Beloved friends, the Godhead, God the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost brings a word of revelation with divine instruction to direct indiv individual lives for the global church body of Jesus Christ. Every true believer and people all across the world ready for the manifested salvation and glory of Jesus Christ. Um, the uh, kingdom of God, the son Jesus Christ, unveils a word of revelation and this present world. Um, uh, in uh, the scripture, uh, it will deal with the spiritual, psychological, and physical view and which we will have you evaluate the very existence of what, who, how, and why, and the perspective where through the lenses of Jesus Christ. God sends a prophetic word dealing with whose hands are you in? This question is a two-dimensional question with a domino effect theory and the second question as in the events, uh, chain reaction of events, the uh, analogy of a mechanical effect as who hands are you really in? A life-changing compass life-changing compass aligned by the word of God. The scripture context relates to the past, present, and the future uh, of manifestation of events. The in-depth question that Jesus Christ is searching from heaven, asking us all, what judge Hands, are you in? The transverse of who, how, and why. Uh, today we will be reading four chapters. Uh, we will be reading in Exodus, uh, Judges first, Judges chapter 2 in its entirety. Then Exodus chapter 27 and 5. First Samuel 3 and 1, and then ending in Revelation 20, um, verses 12 and 13. Let's listen to what the word of the Lord is saying to us today. I just wanted to take some time to read the scriptures. Uh, Judges chapter 2, Judges chapter 2. Starting at verse 1, 23 verses we will be reading. Then the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgad to Buckham and said, I led you up from Egypt and brought you to the land of which I swore to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And you shall make no covenant with inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars. But you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore, I also said, I will not drive them out before you, but they shall be thorns in your side, and their God shall be a snare to you. So it was when the angel of the Lord spoke these words, to all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voices and wept and wept. Then they called the name of that place Malcolm, and they sacrificed there to the Lord. And when Joshua had dismissed the people, the children of Israel went each to his own inheritance to possess the land. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days 
of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord, which he had done by Israel. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of God, died when he was 110 years old. And they buried him within the border of his inheritance. And Timothy, here it is, and the mountain of Ephraim on the north side of Mount Gash. And when all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. Verse 11, then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all uh, among the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them. They bowed down to them. And they provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and the Asherahs. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. So he delivered them into the hands of the plunders who despoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Wherever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for calamity, as the Lord has said, and as the Lord has sworn to them, and they were greatly Greatly distressed. Greatly distressed. Verse 16. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. The Lord raised up judges. Who delivered them out of the hand of those who plundered them. Yet. They would not listen to their judges. But they played the harlot with other gods and bowed down to them. They turned quickly from the way on which their fathers walked in obeying the commandments of the Lord. They did not do so. And when the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of the enemies all the days of the judge. For the Lord was moved to pity by their groaning because of those who oppressed them and harassed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they reverted, they reverted, and behaved more corruptly than their fathers by following other gods hmm, to serve them and bow down to them. They did not cease from their own doings nor from the stubborn ways. Then the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because this nation has transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers and has not heeded my voice. I also will no longer drive out before them any of the nations which Joshua left when he died so that through them I may test Israel whether they will keep the ways of the Lord to walk in them as their fathers kept them or not. Therefore, the Lord let those nations 
left those nations, excuse me, without driving them out immediately, nor did he deliver them into the hand of Joshua. Reading now, reading now, Exodus, Exodus chapter 27, verse 5, King James Version. 27 and 5, and thou shalt put it under the compass of the altar beneath, that the net may be even in the midst of the altar, in the midst of the altar. Now reading, reading, reading from 1 Samuel chapter 3, 1 Samuel chapter 3. Verse 1, and it reads, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. King James, uh, King James Version say precious, but it was rare, it means rare. And those days, rare, and there was no widespread revelation, no widespread revelation, ending in revelation now. Are you sticking with me? Let's listen to what the Lord is saying. Revelation chapter 20, verse thir uh, 12 and 13. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one, according to his works. We have um, the scripture context uh, before us on um, this evening and today's message it uh, it has set the scene with views of events of a rebellious nation of people with a covenant from God as his own people delivered from bondage however this presented a superiority uh, mentality with the nation of Israel in which the relaxed uh, disobedience hinged on God's covenant to save them. The altar of God was no longer used. It was no longer used for a compass of life, other people, corruption, and idol gods were instituted as a normal process of one's daily direction. We will find out about that compass, the spiritual compass. Therefore, for a span of time, God raised up judges and which an angry God himself would not deal directly with the people of Israel to protect provide or deliver them because of Israel's unfaithfulness. Because of Israel's unfaithfulness. And during this uh, same span of time, the word of the Lord was rare without the revelation nor or ability to hear from God nor understand. It was in Judges. And it was also in 1 Samuel. Now let us, 
Let us take a journey in the natural and biblical definition of hands through the lens of Jesus Christ. Let us take a journey. Um, the natural definition of hand. Of hand. Hand is part of the human body. It's a grasping organ at the end of the forelimb of certain vertebrae that exhibits great mobility and flexibility in the digits and in the whole organ. The hand is composed of many different bones. The three major ones is phalanges, metacarpal, and carpal. Then there's the muscles, the ligaments that allow for a large amount of movement and dexterity. Therefore, the hand effect, it represents both a psychological movement and physical movement movement and within the dexterity the domino effect theory is prevalent with the ability of skillfulness gracefulness and think ability aptitude of the cognitive now the biblical definition of hand the hand of God with divine authority and power as in the hand of creation of all things. Hand of restoration. Hand of protection. Hand of salvation. Hand of deliverance. Hand of victory. Hand of destruction. Hand of revelation and hand of judgment. Jesus Christ, he became the right saving hand of God. And he is seated at the right hand of God with all authority and power and the kingdom of heaven, the universe and earth to judge according to the scriptures of truth, guidance and human works. We find that in Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Ah, Jesus Christ is the expressible, authoritative, written word of God. Therefore, the hand of God, Jesus Christ, represents the spiritual, the spiritual, orthative, orthative power of the psychological, physical, and spiritual soul. Hence, the spiritual perspective without the spirit within oneself, the vital quality of life ceases to exist. Uh, Jesus words to us all in Matthew 10 and 28. It reads, and fear not them which can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Let us uh, deal with the diversities of hands. Uh, in the year of 2022, Jesus said, um, many hands will manifest to direct and detour just as in the context of scriptures, the diversity, the diversity of hands, hands of deception, hands of discouragement, hands of abomination, hands of disobedience, hands of obedience, hands of men's justice, hands of injustice, Hands of disproportion, hands of fault, hands of jealousy, hands of love, hands of knowledge, and hands of discernment, 
hands of prosperity, hands of falsehood, hands of detour, hands of guidance, hands of oppression, and hands of despondency and distress. Hands of policy, hands of destruction, hands of judges, hands of messengers, hands of influence, hands of power, hands of death, hands of righteousness, hands of control, my God, hands of pleasure, hands of integrity, hands of poverty, hands of war in battle, hands of the people, hands of leaders, hands of unfaithfulness, and hands of faithfulness, hands of the enemies, hands of idolatry, hands of no hearing, no understanding, hands of the harlots, and hands of corruption. Out of all the diversities of hands, let me proclaim to you, do not fall into the hands of the angry God as in Judges chapter 2. Ecclesiastes 5 and 6, it reads, Suffer not thou mouth to cause thou flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thou voice and destroy the work of thou hands? Whose hands are you in? And then whose hands are you really in? Now let us take a journey in the natural and biblical definition of compass of life through the lenses of Jesus Christ. The natural compass, the natural compass uh, is a device for determining directions by the means of a magnetic needle or group of needles turning freely on a pivot and pointing to the magnetic north. The compass direction. The cardinal directions on a compass are north to south and west to east. They are located on a compass in a specific order. North can be in front and south can be behind you. Now touch the east and west sides. West will be on your left and east will be on your right. The compass degrees, the four corner points are all 90 degrees apart with east being 90 degrees south at 180 degrees, west at 207 degrees and north at 360 degrees. Now, the natural life, the natural, natural life. Life is the period between birth and death or the experience or state of being alive. If you refer to someone's life, you mean that the state of them being alive, especially when there is a risk or danger of them dying. Scientifically, Life of each individual is composed of one or more units, living units, called cells. The living matter, living matter of life as such matter that shows certain attributes. That includes a responsiveness to growth, metabolism, energy transformation, and reproduction. You sticking with me here? breaking this down to you. The process of life thereby reflects its essential status as a process of growth, transformation, and reproduction. Concluding the natural compass of life, 
is one instituted as a device or tool used to direct the degrees of the life within a span of time in the process of life cycle. The biblical spiritual compass of life. When we read in the context, it signifies God intended tabernacle to manifest his presence among his people. You go back and read Exodus chapter 27 and then read Exodus chapter 26. It was to, uh, uh, to pay their devotions to him. And within the courts, we have the altar was set up to bring the sacrifices, to bring their sacrifices. And these sacrifices could only be brought in by the priests. And the priests would have to wear certain garments to come in to the tabernacle where the ark of the testimony was. And then you will find the altar was to sanctify their gifts. It was to present their services to God as from the mercy seat. Right. He gave his oracles to them, the priests, and then the priests went back and spoke to the people. And thus it was a communion was settled between God and Israel. Now the altar dimensions and structure, structure of the altar, dimensions of the altar, it was square. The horns of the altar, which were for uh, an ointment and for use, the sacrifices were bound with cords to the horns of the altar and to the male factors uh, fled for refuge. Uh, the materials of the altar were of wood overlaid with brass. And then in the midst of the altar, which were all brass, brass, and the grate, which was left, left into the hollow of the altar. And then you have the staves, which the altar uh, must be carried. And lastly, God is referred to the pattern shown to Moses in verse 26, chapter Exodus chapter 26, and then Exodus chapter 27, God shows him the pattern that are to be followed for the altar. And so the compass of the altar it was just beneath the altar. It was about middle way beneath the altar of it that the net may be even in the midst of the altar. Uh, the compass represented a spiritual stabilizer and it even out the hollow which the fire was kept that the fire might burn better and that the ashes might fall through uh, to purify the sacrifices, a burnt uh, offering to God as in atonement. The spiritual metaphor uh, in the Old Testament of the compass, uh, it depicts the New Testament cross, viewing it in the natural, in the spiritual eyes, north to south, ah, and west to east. And which Jesus Christ, he sacrificed his life. He sacrificed his life for us. And he became the new uh, covenant. He died on the cross for our sins. And he sacrificed his life and became the new covenant, the new atonement to God the Father for mankind. Hebrews chapter 8 Verse 7 and 8, then 13, it, 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 it simply reads, For if the first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, which speaking of the children of Israel, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. 
with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And verse uh, 13 within uh, Hebrews 8, it says, and that he says a new covenant, a new covenant, has he has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. The compass, the compass, the compass, the compass of the altar. And then the compass of life and the spiritual biblical view. It represents the altar of Jesus Christ and which his people daily must enter into. Offering the sacrifices of thanksgiving, devotion of service to his commandments in obedience, praying, praying for direction in life, allowing the Holy Spirit to just even out the balance of spiritual well-being in the physical world. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth in life. And it was to obtain the mercy and grace of God in life as a guiding light. Concluding the spiritual compass of life, as Jesus Christ stated, most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall uh, not come into judgment, but pass from death into life. Therefore, a divine spiritual life transformation of everlasting life into heaven. It's just that simple. But the price is a committed life. Tested obedience. And prayer relationship with Jesus Christ as the sinner the compass for the right direction. Hebrews 4 and 16 says, and let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, Jesus Christ, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The compass of life. Now, let us take a journey in the scripture context with the revelation for us all today. There are seven observations within the scripture context relating to whose hands, whose hands are you in? The compass of life instructing and warning. The first observation, God always provides instruction for his people. Within the context of judges, the people of Israel, they disobeyed God's instruction. Although he delivered them from bondage, made a covenant with them, gave instruction on the land to possess, delivered them from the hand of the enemy, and delivered the enemies into their hands. He provided instructions for them. The second observation that we can get, God always sends a divine messenger before destruction. He sent his angel. Uh, the people of Israel possessed the land as he promised. However, they began to partner with the enemy, tore down the spiritual altar of God uh, where his presence was supposed to dwell, where they would go in and get the instructions from God, where the burning, the fire would purify and the mercy seat would be presented and the oracles given. 
My God, they tore down the spiritual altar of God. The tabernacle, the ark, was not even present. And replaced it with, with altars of idols from the lands that they possess within the people the people within the lands. And he told them not to. And the angel of the Lord was specific. And he asked God's question. Why have you done this? Why have you done this? Why have you done this? The third observation. The generation of God's people. The generation of God's people, the physical Israel, God's chosen people, and then Israel as a nation, we are called to be God's people. The generation of God's people must remember, we got to remember who God the Father is and his son, Jesus Christ, are, and the covenant agreement made for his people. We have to remember in the Old Testament. We have to remember in the New Testament. The new covenant agreement. The generation which rose up after Joshua. Forgot about the Lord. The altar. My God. And his mighty works. Such. As today. They lacked. Knowledge in understanding about God and his chosen people. You read Judges chapter two, verse 10. My God, the fourth thing that we can get observation, unfaithfulness and disobedience. Unfaithfulness and disobedience to God will eventually lead to provoking the Lord to anger. The anger of the Lord, it is incomparable to any anger. And his hand of anger is heavy with dimensions. We find this out in the context of scripture and judges. God responded this way because Israel, his people neglected to obey him wholeheartedly. They knew what to do and their partiality of repentance was not true. And then they did evil in his sight and deliberately followed other gods more than God. Whose hands are you in? And then whose hands are you really in? The fifth observation that we can get, a God of compassion. Although God's anger, it was hot against Israel. He raised up judges to deliver them out of the hand of those who plundered them. And within the span of time, there were four major judges raised up. There was Othanel, Ehud, Shamgar and Deborah, the prophetess. Yet, the children of Israel would not listen to their judges. It was only for a moment in time and reverted to sin. They reverted to sin. Therefore, there was no direct communion with God, nor revelation of direction, protection, and God's almighty powerful hand because the altar of God, presence lacked in the midst of the people of Israel. The sixth observation that we can get, the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. When the word of God becomes rare, just as in 1 Samuel 3 and 1, the revelation of his word will not be present or his voice. You will not be able to hear God's voice. Although Eli, 
He was a priest. He provoked God's anger with the same rebellion and unfaithfulness by allowing his sons to do wickedly and serve in God's house. Ah, my God. Hence, God raised up a child, a boy, prophet Samuel, to speak for him of the judgment to come. What compass of life is directing you? The seventh observation that we can get is the judge of all. God's new covenant, Jesus Christ, is the judge of all things in this present world and things to come to pass to the heavens. Jesus Christ declares in John 5 and 22 and 30, For the Father judges no one but has committed all judgment into, huh, to the Son. And then in uh, John, that same chapter, verse 30, it says, I can of myself do nothing as I hear. My God, I judge. So he still listens to the Father. And my judgments is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Jesus Christ is referenced as the faithful and true judge. We will find in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. The judge appointed to open the books and the book of life in which every human being will be judged according to works and obedience. The living and the dead. Yeah. Uh, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, standing before God and seated at the right hand of God. And you would find the books were open and another book of life which Jesus Christ has authority over was open and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Concluding the beginning in all things is Jesus Christ, the Alpha and Omega. Although life, listen to this, will present many challenges in 2022. Many hands, many victories, and many compasses. The true compass of life leading to salvation, deliverance, restoration, and eternity is Jesus Christ, the judge. His right saving hand a power and authority is present today. Second Peter 3 and 9 says, it declares, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Let us keep this perspective of the presented question throughout 2022, whose hands, whose hands ah, are you in? And then whose hands are you really, my God, in? Knowing that Jesus Christ has all the power and authority over everything. Whose hands are you? really in. And let us remember God's unchanging hand of salvation leading us to the altar, the altar, Jesus Christ, back to the altar, a prayer, the altar of sacrifice and thanksgiving, the altar of devotion and commitment, the altar guiding and leading us, the altar where the spirit and presence of the glory of God dwells.
the altar. And Isaiah 56 and 8 says, And even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house, my God of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted up on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. This altar is for all people. Jesus Christ, the new covenant, is for all people. And within that same passage, Isaiah 56 and 8 says, let us get this view. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel says, yet I will gather to him others, others. That means everybody. Besides those who are gathered to him, his chosen people, who hands, who hands are you in? And then who hands are you really in? What compass of life will be leading you in 2022? This is the message that the Lord, the in-depth message that the Lord has given to me. Let us remember this. Those of the church body, let us have the right compass today. Let us evaluate whose hands we are in throughout 2022. And those that he's calling to salvation, Jesus Christ is the new covenant he calls, he's calling us all to repentance, to true repentance. And he's calling the sinner and the backslider to salvation. And I'm just going to close with this prayer. Thank God. Thank God for Jesus Christ, the new covenant. Where would we be today? Lord Jesus, I thank you for this time of ministering for using me as a vessel to bring the message that you have given for in 2022, the year of 2022. Father God, I pray for the church body that we will see the in-depthness of this revelation, that we will study the scriptures, study the scriptures, the word of God, Jesus Christ, that we may begin to be under his lordship and be in his hands, and that we will journey to the altar and the presence of Jesus Christ, where the glory, his presence dwell, where direction dwells, where communion dwells, where his light dwells. God, I pray for every sinner and backslider. I pray salvation, that they will come to salvation, ask for forgiveness of sins, and receive Jesus into their hearts today. I pray salvation. I pray that lives are turned around by the authority of Jesus Christ. And by the word of God that he's given. May we all evaluate ourselves. Of whose hands, whose hands we will be in in twenty. 22, knowing that Jesus Christ's hands is the ultimate hand. And then whose hands are we really in? Father God, we thank you for this time. Thank you for this time. You'll be blessed and stay connected to Jesus. Whose hands are you in?